So if you've been on our website recently, you'll probably notice there's two very similar looking products. One is going to be the PVS 14 standard and the PVS 14 Pro. And a lot of people have been asking, what are the differences? They have the same name, they look almost the same. And other than a difference in pricing, a lot of people are confused as to what makes them tick. Spoiler alert for those who have watched a lot of our videos, it's going to be the lenses. Hi guys, Ryan here from CHS, and today we are going to be discussing a long-awaited video and an update to an older video that we did on the PVS-14 line that we carry and the differences between the PVS-14 Standard and Pro. So let's get into it. So the PVS-14 is kind of like the Honda Civic, the AR-15, or the AK of the night vision world. It's been used in a lot of different conflicts and a lot of pretty crazy zones out there, and it's very ubiquitous as the most popular night vision binocular in the world right now. But like the AR-15 or the AK, they do not have a set OEM. PVS-14 is kind of more of a pattern, just like those guns. They do have a lot of different manufacturers, and here at CHS we carry two lines of the PVS-14 for two different price ranges. The more affordable PVS-14 is going to be the PVS-14 standard, and this one is OEM'd by a company called Optronics Engineering, and our more premium PVS-14 is going to be called the PVS-14 Pro, and this one is OEM'd by Carson Industries in the US. There are other OEMs out there but these are going to be the ones that we carry. So on external inspection, the PVS-14 Standard and Pro look really, really similar, but there are a few differences that tell them apart, and we do want to be transparent with you guys, and not all retailers will actually have the differences listed, so we're going to show you guys what those differences are. So starting off with the OE PVS-14, or the Standard, and when you're looking at the back at the, what we call this is the ocular lens, or the eyepiece lens, you're going to notice one thing, and that is the eyepiece lens on the OE is not going to be compatible with a lot of accessories that PVS-14s use, such as filters, uh, eye cup rings, and things like that. They actually are a little bit proprietary in that regard. However, if you do get a OE PVS-14 from us, we actually can include these diopter adapter rings, which is a ring that goes in the back here. If we zoom in here, you can actually see that this ring screws in, and this basically is an adapter that allows you to use standard PVS-14 accessories such as this lens filter over here. You'll also notice that the finish of the more affordable PVS-14 is a bit more glossy, so that's one thing to keep an eye out for, whereas the Carson is not as glossy, it's a bit more matte. The rear eyepiece on the Carson Industries PVS-14 is actually OEM'd by Fujinon, so the same guys that make the cameras, it's actually a really excellent eyepiece, and unlike the Optronics ones, it takes PVS-14 accessories right off the bat like so. You don't need any adapter rings, they're designed out of the box to fit filters, accessories, what have you. Mil-spec PVS-14s can have a variety of lens manufacturers. This one is going to be Fujinon, like I said earlier. Another one is going to be Chioptic, and they're both optically quite good. It's actually very hard, if not impossible, to tell the difference between the two. But there are some physical differences. So for the Fujinon rear eyepiece, it's a bit glossier, although not as glossy as the Optronics one. The Chioptic one is going to be a bit more matte. The Chioptic lens, if you look at it, is actually going to have also a much richer anti-reflective coating than the Fujinon, but that doesn't actually really affect performance from our testing. Otherwise, doesn't matter which one you get, they're both excellent. Moving on to the bodies of the nods from the rear lens, there's going to be some minor cosmetic differences. So let's start with the Optronics PVS-14. So the Optronics PVS-14, and this is going to be a theme with the Optronics unit itself, is going to be a little bit more glossy. It's also going to be a bit more scalloped. The biggest way you can tell the difference between the two is actually going to be the battery housings, where they house the batteries. Optronics has a bit more of this scallop design over here, whereas the Carson Industries one is a bit more rounded, a bit more robust. This doesn't actually affect the structural integrity, it's just a different design choice. There is another OEM of PVS-14, and that's going to be Elbit or ITT. They actually look a lot like the OE-14s, except they have the more Carson matte finish. We don't typically carry those, but we do see them floating around in the wild from time to time. That is also a US mil spec unit and a great PVS-14. Aside from the minor cosmetic differences between the two, the actual operations of the devices are really similar, if not identical. The Carson has a nice power knob here that's on, and then you just pull and twist for IR, and it's the exact same thing on the Optronics. That's on, pull and twist for IR. The knobs feel nice and robust. They feel the exact same. 
In the front, if you have a tube that supports manual gain, like most of the photonist tubes that we sell with these things, you have a gain knob here that can control the brightness of the unit. If you got one with an NEVT, those are auto gain tubes, then this knob doesn't do anything. It's going to be the same thing with the Carson, which also has a gain knob in the front, and they, again, feel identical. They will also both take AA batteries, and the battery life is between 40 to 60 hours. Depending on the types of batteries you use, it's going to be longer with our recommended lithium batteries. You're going to get better power delivery and better operations in cold weather. The only other caveat that I do want to note when it comes to choosing your PVS-14 is that if you do plan on applying a Nicorium wrap to it, they make two different lines. Just make sure you get the right one. They are correctly labeled on our website. Moving on to the front lens, the Optronics actually features a vastly improved front lens over their previous iterations. Their new front lenses focus much nicer. They also have improved anti-reflective coatings, which not only reduce flaring, but actually improve light transmission. And they have much better contrast and clarity than previous iterations. The Carson PVS-14 features the legendary Fujinon front lens piece on it. It has this really beautiful purple finish. It has actually, kind of like the Optronics, a glossy finish on the side, and it wholly has a single row of knurling. Some PVS-14s that we've sold in the past and some being made right now will also feature a Chioptic front lens, which is another OEM for Carson Industries. They make really great front glass as well. It also features really great contrast and flare suppression. And if you have one with this double knurling over here and has this blue finish on a PVS-14 Pro, rest assured, it is a fantastic front piece. Both of these front lenses are going to be compatible with standard accessories. So even the Optronics here, which is normally needing a rear adapter, doesn't need one for the front. It fits this Defender just fine. And if you wanted to put an iris on it, that also fits well and is a very popular accessory for our night vision devices. The Carson obviously has no problems fitting any of these either. So with the day cap, the OE PVS-14 weighs 348 grams. It's pretty good. Now we're going to put the Carson one on, and it has the day cap as well, just to keep things fair. And the Carson PVS-14 is actually lighter, despite having a little bit more robust looking of a body at 345 grams. It's probably not going to make a difference to anybody's use, but we thought we'd just show you that there is a little bit of a difference between the bodies here. All right, now that the weight and physical comparison is out of the way, let's actually get into the performance differences between these devices. What we're going to be doing, because the only thing that really makes these devices different is actually going to be the lenses, is we're going to be taking one device and swapping the lenses on them, with the same tube for our Hoffman tests and our tests that are more static. And we're also going to do a more dynamic test where we're going to be moving around just like we do with the boom slangs with two cameras stacked on top of each other with the same settings. So stay tuned, we're gonna get into the labs and onto the testing to see what makes the Pro different from the standard. So our first Hoffman test will be the system gain test, and this measures the overall gain of the unit. The number displayed by the Hoffman machine indicates the number of times the source light has been increased, so the higher the number, the better. The first lens we're gonna be testing is the Fujinon lens on the Carson Industries monocular. And as you can see, the gain value reads on this tube an average of 4,570. Next, we're putting on the Optronics lenses, and these are reading quite similar to the Carson Industry lenses at 4545, which is a huge improvement over previous iterations and are very similar to the standard. Next up, we will be doing a resolution test, and here you can see that we're using a pretty high FOM Echo Plus tube, and we're stacking these units against each other in the lab setting with lots of fixed conditions. You might notice a slightly more greenish and richer tone in the PVS-14 Pro going forward in all our videos, and I suspect this is because the Fujinon lenses have a slightly stronger rear anti-reflective coating that may affect the rendition of color. As you can see in these fixed lighting conditions, both lenses perform very similarly with the edge going slightly to the Fujinon or the Carson Industries lenses coming out in extreme low light conditions. Next, we'll be looking at the distortion chart and what we're looking for is an overall flat image. Now, a photography pet peeve of mine is that most people misidentify the distortion of most NV as fisheye when it's actually pincushion distortion. The difference between the two is fisheye is barrel distortion and bows outward while pincushion distortion bows towards the middle. Most NV and convex lenses will have some degree of pincushion distortion, and as you can see, the OE lenses have a bit more distortion, and this is more apparent towards the edge of the lens. 
Now in terms of eye relief, we've put this in our eye relief testing rig and moved the unit back in half centimeter increments. As you can see, the eye relief is very similar between the two devices with maybe the Pro edging out the standard ever so slightly in extreme distances, but overall the eye relief is extremely similar with very little distinction between the two. However, for those using gas masks, Big Eye Pro, or those that like to run their nods all the way out to see around, that might be something you might want to take into consideration. So we've done these physical comparisons and taken them to the lab. So let's take these out to the real world where you guys can look through them as if you were using them and see how they stack up against each other. All right, now for some real world testing. So we are in a rural environment and this property has some mixed environments here, one with a woodlot and one closer to a swimming pool in a farm backyard setting. In this case, both units perform pretty well. The OE unit's distortion is actually a lot less of an issue in these more rural environments because there's nothing like urban geometry has to resolve. So that distortion, I would say, is almost a non-issue in this case. You will notice, however, the Carson Industries optics are a little bit more sharp, a little bit more contrast. The images look overall a little bit more punchy, and I have focused these lenses to the best of my ability. So if you are looking to maximize performance, the PVS 14 Pro is going to give you that little bit of extra juice. However, if you want to save a bit of cash, the OE units perform perfectly fine in this environment, and both units intensify light at around the same levels with a bit more image quality going to the Carson Industries lenses. In our next test, we're looking at a real world ultra low light test. And we went to a warehousing room and turned off all the lights with only the camera display and a very tiny glow stick in the middle of the room. So there's actually something to intensify. Some of you guys don't know, but nods actually will not work if there's no light involved. So we needed to give it a little bit of something. The increased light transmission of the Carson industry lens is really showing its colors here with the camera being able to resolve slightly more details in the shelving unit than the OE, as you can see with the picture-in-picture -picture zoom in above. But in this case, realistically, most people would be using some sort of IR illuminator. All right, so now that we got the more low light and rural tests out of the way, we're moving on to our side-by-side -side camera test with two very similar tubes, so there shouldn't be any real differences in terms of the performance of them in an urban mixed lighting environment to see how they do with flaring urban geometry, and off-axis flaring. In our mixed lighting and urban lighting tests, the OE does show dramatically improved coatings with regards to their previous iterations. And against their Fujinon brethren, it seems that they do have decent flare suppression. However, they do have more off-axis flaring and more of a washout effect with lens flares than the Carson Industry lenses. However, the PVS-14 Pro on the flip side does have these halo elements to them, these very sharp lens flares, which may be distracting depending on your preferences. Generally though, for urban use from my testing, I would say the PVS-14 Pro with its Fujinon lenses would be a stronger choice because of the overall lack of this off-axis flaring and its better performance when it comes to mixed lighting characteristics. So there you go, our PVS-14 comparison video for 2024. So the age-old question at the end, which nod is going to be the one for me? And to answer that question, I gotta ask, where are you gonna be using this nod and how much are you willing to spend? If you're going to be using this nod in primarily rural environments, so let's say you're going through the forest, you're on a farm somewhere, and you don't have to worry about things like distortion as much because it's a lot less noticeable in rural environments, and you don't have to worry about mixed lighting conditions, Honestly, the PVS-14 standard gets you most of the way there, and that little bit of money you save from the top can go into things like mounts, arms, or any other life stuff that you need to save for. However, if you do want uncompromised monocular performance, then the PVS-14 Pro is going to be the one to get. It is the mil-spec standard for a reason. Carson Industries have been making these for a long time. If you're operating in urban environments, then I would go with the PVS-14 Pro simply for the flare suppression and distortion characteristics. But again, that's going to be up to you and what your use case is. So what I like to say at Cold Harbor Supply is we have a nod for everyone. If you like this video, please let us know what you want to see on the next video. Like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, and we will see you on the next one.